Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be making the cake from Wreck-It Ralph. Not a Wreck-It Ralph cake, THE cake from Wreck-It Ralph. And credit where it's due, this is totally inspired by the amazing Mary. No, not Mary Berry, this Mary. Now unfortunately I only have a tutorial for the building part, not the figures, but they're quite simplified. Here I've got a 14 inch square drum and two 12 by 10 inch rectangle drums. This part in the film is a sheet cake, but Sophie didn't need extra cake for her party, so we used drums to give the internal structure a bit of extra hold. First we want to stick these two rectangles together, but avoid getting glue in the centre as we will need to drill through this. Spread hot glue all over the board, again avoiding the centre. Place the other board on top, pressing down into position. Now stick the rectangles to the square board, leaving a little gap at the front for the name. Next you'll need a wooden dowel. You can use threaded rod if you like, but as there's no need for bolts and it's just to hold the cake central, then wood is cheaper. This piece is cut to roughly 33cm high. You'll also need a wood drill piece that is slightly smaller than the dowel. Here I've got a number 10 and my dowel is 12. The cake drum will open up wider than your drill bit, hence why we're using a smaller one. Mark the centre of your rectangle drum and attach your drill bit. I'm leaning on an old cake dummy so I don't damage any surfaces. Place your boards on top and make sure your centre mark is over the dummy. Slowly drill down into the drums. You don't want to go all the way through, you should just be able to feel the spike of the drill bit emerging from the bottom drum. The thicker the base that the dowel goes into, in this case three drums, the more secure it will be. Add hot glue to the hole and insert the dowel as straight as you can and leave it to set. You can choose to cover your wood if you like in either melted chocolate, candy melts, non-toxic paint, cling film, straws or tape. I'm using a waterproof tape that sticks to itself. I'm also covering the base with sellotape just to cover up any bits of hot glue that may have seeped out. Using some foam core, cut out some squares that are slightly smaller than 5 inch. I cut three squares but only ended up using two. Mark the centres of the squares and cut out a hole with the scalpel, big enough to slot over the dowel. Hot glue around the base of the dowel and slip your first square into position. Once it's set, add ganache to the square to stick your first slice of cake in. The squares are 5 inch. Add filling and your next layer of cake and keep going until you're part way up. Once you have a few layers on, you'll need some support. The cake will be soft and won't withstand the full force of the rest of the cake above it. You can support it with either dowels or bubble tea straws like I have here. Everything I use will be in the description box. Pop the straws down until they hit the base and cut them level with the cake. Next add your other foam core square. All the cake that sits above this will be held by the straws on the foam core platform. The central dowel is only there to help such a tall and narrow cake from toppling sideways. Start adding the rest of your cake until you're around two thirds of the way up before switching to six inch squares to create the tapered cartoon building look. Once your cakes are all stacked, take a knife and start trimming it to shape, leaving it larger at the top and thinner at the bottom. Apply a thin, rough coat of ganache just to seal the sponge and all its crumbs. Don't worry about the wobbling, it's my overused cake stand, the cake is fine I promise. Once that layer has set, you will feel the structure is firmer already. Add a second layer and scrape the sides with a scraper. To 
to aid with the final coat, cut a 6 inch or a little larger square from foam core and cover it tightly with cling film or a food bag. Just tape the bag with sellotape. Trim off the rough ganache from the top and add a final layer, spreading it to all the edges so it overhangs a bit. Place your square on with the sellotape facing up and squash it into the wet ganache as level as you can. Spread some ganache up to the square to hold it into position and let it set. Once the top has been skewered, just remove any overhang. Now add the final layer to the sides using the square at the top as a guide. Scrape the sides as flat as you can with a scraper. Once it's all set, peel the square from the top and tidy it up with a knife and any ganache in the air pockets. Spray the cake with water and distribute it with a pastry brush. Panel each side with white sugar paste. Drape the excess over the top to hold the weight whilst you secure the panel. Use a scalpel to trim down the sides, along the top and don't forget to smooth it out. Spin the cake around and cover the opposite side. Then do the front and the back. Taking some strips of greaseproof paper, mask off the bottom and pin it into place with acupuncture needles. Add another strip to the top. Using red airbrush colour, spray directly at the edge of the strip being careful not to hold it at an angle and end up blowing it up. When spraying the edges of the building, angle the cake edge away from you to stop the overspray. Add a light layer of black airbrush over the top to just dim the red. Carefully remove the pins and the paper strips. Repeat the process on the other sides. If your strips become oversaturated, just use new ones. For the top part of the cake, we are using foam core again. The reason for this is that it's going to house a lot of toppers and a lot of wires so the entire top of the building can be removed all in one piece and it can be kept as a keepsake if wanted. This square is roughly 7 inch. Add ganache to the top to act as glue. Dampen it with water or piping gel to stick on some white sugar paste. Trim this level with the edges. I think Mary is a Wilton fan. See that border on her cake? That's the strip from the Wilton's Baroque mould. I've pre-cut some, hence why it's a little dusty. Attaching sugar paste to the edge of foam core can be difficult, but piping gel makes it much easier than water. Add a generous amount with a paintbrush and carefully attach the border. With peach airbrush colour, lightly spray the border and all remaining white areas. Using some pale blue paste with Tylo added, we're going to create windows. Roll out the paste and if you have one, pass it through a pasta machine. This ensures they will all be the same thickness. One of the best purchases for cake decorators, I reckon. Using a small square cutter, press into the paste. If you have a few jagged edges, you can clean them up with either your finger to create neat edges 
or you can rub your cutter on a foam pad to buff away the excess paste. It just makes your work a little neater. Then spend hours cutting out windows. Using that handy see-through quilting ruler that I've linked below, mark sections in the cake. You want a section around the bottom and one around the top so the centre section is the largest. Then use these as guidelines for your windows. Two windows in the smaller sections and roughly five rows in the centre section. Add water along the guidelines and add strips of pale peach sugar paste. You can even use your ruler to straighten them. You'll also need to add strips to the airbrush lines. Only the front of the building has these vertical thin stripes, thank you Mary. This was run through the spaghetti attachment on the pasta machine, so handy. Then add the rest of your windows. It was at this point I realised a 4am finish was in store for me. I blame Mary entirely. Two thousand years later. Here's a handy little cutter I found. It cuts various sizes of pill shapes and came in a pack for squares, triangles, hexagons and stars. If I find them I'll pop the link below. I cut the pill shapes flat and they made arched windows. As the clock passes midnight, I'm like Cinderella, dazed, running through icing sugar wearing just one slipper. I forgot to hit record, I was covering the board, but luckily it's the same method as the toilet seat, just square. I'll leave it linked above. The pathway is strips of pale peach fondant, cut at angles so they slot together. The centre path is just a strip attached with water. To make the doorway, cut a strip and wet one edge. Curve this over and attach the wet edge to the cake to create an arch. For Ralph's chocolate puddle, it's just a piece of brown sugar paste cut into a wavy pattern and then pressed in to make them a little more square. Attach this to the right side of the building and a separate splodge of paste. To attach the trees, grab a small screwdriver, like a jeweler size, and a hammer. Be careful not to wake your neighbours while you play Fix It Felix. Tap the top of the screwdriver until it makes a hole deep enough just to hold two cocktail sticks. Tape the sticks together with florist tape. Add cones of brown sugar paste over them to create tree trunks. For the sunburst topper, I'm using a semicircle of foam core. Again, this is only going to house wire, so it's a good medium to use. Sketch a sunburst shape onto paper and making sure it's larger than your foam core. To make the wired stars, cut out star shapes from yellow paste with Tylo added and slowly insert a wire that's been dipped in piping gel. Put these aside to dry flat. Cut out your sunburst and stick it onto your foam core. Insert two cocktail sticks to the base. Attach this to the top of the building. And that's it, that's all I've got. My battery was dying, my SD card was full, it was 4am and the radio station was taunting me with the Wreck-It Ralph theme. I'm not even kidding. I attached the stars into the foam core and added sparklers at the birthday girl's request. Hi Sophie. The number five and the name was cut out using my usual method. I'll leave a link to a tutorial that includes it. The people and Fix It Felix are purposely simplified as Mary's are on her cake. The doorway gained a little blue canopy. The edge was lined with green sugar paste pieces and Ralph again was simplified and uglified like Mary made. Hopefully enough of this tutorial was captured to make it useful. Sophie is a fan of YouTube videos and requested we capture it for her. So I hope you had a fab birthday. 
See you next time, guys. Bye.